Hey, K Squad. Oh my goodness. Look at all you. Let's see. Hi. Wow. This is so exciting. Look at a view. Look at all of you in here already. Hi. I am attempting. Oh, you see that's going on there. Okay. So I've never live streamed with Facebook also, and I'm just trying to see. Oh. Okay, it's working. <laughs> uh, we're going to give that a shot. I've never done it before. All right. How is everyone? <gasps> oh, my goodness. I really tried to give a heads up today so that I could get as many people in here to be together on K-Squad Sunday. So, oh my gosh, I'm seeing such familiar faces. Sandra and Melissa and Lisa and Jan from NYC and Piglet's Bank and Amira and Nimzo. Oh my gosh, hi everybody. Okay, I have so many things to say today oh good you appreciate the heads up i was like i knew today i was gonna have this window of time so i'm like let's do this so first of all to my og k squad members that come here every single week you always click on my video you watch it from start to end thank you so much i appreciate you more than i can say and then to my new K-Squad members that are just coming in, we welcome you and we're so glad that you're here. We hope that you are, you know, having the same kind of goals or like realizations like, hey, you know what? I can be better with money. I can save money when I'm spending less on the things that are not important and spending more on the things that are the whole concept of frugal living. I hope that if you are brand new and this is something that you are striving for and just like in life want to have this experience, we are here for you. Hi, Frugal Stew. Oh gosh, I'm so excited to see you all. Kiki's here. She has hijacked a spoon and she's been traveling through the house with it. So if you hear a little clinking, in the background, that's Kiki. Oh, Evelyn, thank you. She says, you truly motivate me. So what I was thinking is, when we do these lives, I want you to know that part of the frugal living strategy for me is very repetitive, but that is on purpose because my frugal practices work for me. And if they don't work for you, tweak it or don't do them at all, but take whatever sounds like, hey, let's give that a try. And then, you know, don't you're not going to do everything that I suggest. You just use what works for you. Kiki says hi too. Hey, Sob. Oh, my son and I are eating lunch and he's watching with me. Awesome. Ooh. So the way I think about this is sometimes it's like, why would I keep, you know, wanting to watch the same stuff over and over again? Why are these tips similar? And this is what I was thinking about. When you read a life-changing book, for example, in the K-Squad book club that we used to do, and some of you want to bring it back, I know uh, it's just not able to do it right now, but like we read this, for example. We read this. We read this. We read this. And if you are a member of my channel, you have access to all of these discussions. But my point is, when we read these, when we read them, we're like, this is going to change my life. I'm going to start implementing these habits and it's going to be amazing and my whole life has changed. However, we get so gung-ho and we're like, ah, oh, but unless 
we really focus to implement the changes, we forget about it. So you read like the best book of your life and a week or two later, it's like a vague memory. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, who's a reader in here? Let me know in the comments. Are you a reader? Some of the stuff will stick out because it's so mind blowing, but there's probably more we want to practice, but we forget about it. We've got a lot going on in our mind. So the video that I am revisiting today was called uh, 10 Money Rules to Live Rich and Not Stress About Money. And this was, I think in 2020, you guys, that I recorded that. Um, and they all are still applicable. They're all still applicable. They're all still rocking. And that is like where I'm coming from, guys. So if you're new, if you've been here a bit, the repetitiveness to me is important or else I sort of forget slash just kind of gets in the back of my mind. And if you're trying to live a frugal lifestyle and you're trying to save money and you're trying to get somewhere different in your personal finances that you never have before, these are 10 rules that I think are going to be really helpful. And again, it's it's over and over. It's over and over. It's We are what we repeat. I've said that. Um, it's a quote, famous quote which I forgot who quoted it. Sorry, I had it in one of my videos. If anyone wants to Google it, let me know. Um, all right. So number one, and I could literally just say this one and then walk away, and that's the key, it's to live below your means. I just had a, a commenter comment, you know, I hear what you're saying, but I'm too old to change my ways. I'm set in my ways. I just can't stop spending. And it ripped my heart out because I'm like, I know that feeling. And you know that feeling where you're so set in your ways after all the rep the repetition in the wrong direction, the repetitiveness of the thing that's not going to move the needle in your finances that you feel like hopeless. You're like, I can't, I can't change, you know, I can't change. I, uh, this is how I do things, but it doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to be that way. You can change. I just watched Great Expectations the other day too. And uh, she says, we don't change. We, we do, we can change our behavior. Even if you are the same at the root of yourself, you can change your behavior in small little ways at first, and then it will snowball. Living below your means. What does that mean? It means if you have this amount of money, you never spend that amount of money and you never spend above that amount of money or else you're in debt. We don't like debt. <laughs> we don't like debt around here if we can avoid it. Debt equates to stress, owing people, burdensome. There's just not a lot of um, good feelings associated with debt. Sandra just said, oh, excuse me. I meant to say this one, sorry. It means freedom. If you didn't watch my video from this, fr this Friday, please watch it after. I've been really enjoying your comments and I feel like I just want everyone to hear that message. So if you didn't watch Friday's video, if you're new here or you've just been busy, please, after this one, check out the video that I just posted on Friday because we talk about freedom and it is important. Alejandra says, we don't do debt. I like that. We don't do it. So if you live below your means, and I say this all the time, but if you make this and you spend under it, you're never going to be in debt. It's just the math. So how do we do that? Girl, boy, you got to know how much you have for an income and you've got to know what you're spending, right? 
So we're going to get into that talking more about budgeting, but you've got to know what your means are so that you can get under, under the limbo stick, if you will, right? How low can you go? <laughs> you got to stay under that limbo stick. Who likes to limbo? You got to stay under it. All right. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, hi, Mayor. Hi. But this is what I was trying to click on. Sorry, you guys have so many comments. I'm okay. Julie says, I'm 62 and had to totally change my ways of managing my debt and my mindset. If Julie is 60 and can do that, you can do that any age. If you're 70, if you're 80 and you're watching this, you can still make some progress. But good Lord, you guys, if you're in your 20s watching this, Rosie, you're in your teens, what I would give to know all this sooner, what I wouldn't give, seriously. Like there's just, it, if we can learn this, the sooner the better, it is amazing. Living below your means, I think is key if you want to save more money than you ever have before. But you have to know what the means are. So don't ignore it. Don't be scared. And you're like one eye open, like trying to see all your bills and stuff. Ah, look at this. 72 made the change. Yes. Right, Sue? Wish I knew it sooner also. What I wouldn't give. So live below your means. Number two, never, 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 ever, never, ever whip out a credit card unless you have the money in your checking to cover to pay it off that month. I do have a credit card. Some people are anti-credit card. If you're anti-credit card because you see no value in it, don't use them. If you're anti-credit card because you do not trust that you will not overspend with it, then don't use them. Me personally, I'm in a place where I can use them responsibly. I never buy anything on my credit card that I don't currently have in my checking account right now. Like if the bill all of a sudden got moved up 30 days, I have it now. But I like the points, I do. I like the rewards that I get. I like to save up those rewards. And at the end of the year, I like to buy Christmas presents. That's just kind of the way I do it. But if there's any way that you don't feel comfortable using credit cards, don't use them. Use your debit card. Or some people prefer the cash method. That's, of course, your prerogative. You can do it either way. But never swipe. Never swipe unless you already have it. Anti-credit card since 2020. Always find a way that works for you. Listen to what I say, but then tweak it however you want. Oh, by the way, I just as an experiment, I have no, I've never live streamed through Facebook and YouTube at the same time. Would you guys be so kind to share this on your social medias right now? I just want to see if it makes a difference. If anyone doesn't mind, if you're on Facebook or you, whatever, just share this with one of your social medias right now. If you think it's valuable in any way, I just want to see what happens. Cause I, I haven't done it like this before. All right. Number three, pay your bills on time. This is a thing where maybe it's because. You don't have a better system for this, but late fees are not something the K-Squad wants to pay for. We don't want late fees. Thanks, Amira, for sharing it. Thank you so much. Um, we don't want to pay late fees. There's nothing that bothers me more than me missing a payment that got past the goalie somehow. Like, how does this even happen? 
Most of my things are on auto pay. I put everything on auto pay. So except a couple things, there's a couple things that I like to keep my eye directly on, but for the most part, you've got to pay your bills on time. Late fees, ew, what a waste of our money because we weren't organized, because we weren't thinking ahead, because we didn't plan. And that's not to be like, oh, shame on you, whatever. It's not, I mean, it happens once in a while, but if this is like a recurring thing, now, especially if you're not paying your bills on time because you don't have it, that's another whole reason to be working on that so that you have a buffer, budget buffer. I'm not getting into that at the moment, but you, you want to have a little bit of a cushion. You don't want to be in the at the point where you don't have the money at all. So that's why all these things, yes, no late fees ever. We don't want to pay for late fees, okay? So we've got to pay those bills on time. And if you're not, do auto pay or set reminders on your phone. Like in 2023, there's really no excuse except we, we're not organized, right? Or or like you don't have it. But if you don't have it, that's another reason to be diving into this channel and be educating yourself on all the ways that you can find ways to save money. I have a playlist of frugal living tips. I have a whole playlist on living below your means. I have a whole playlist on budgeting. I have a whole playlist on saving money tips. So please, if you need more, I've got you. I've got tons for you, okay? All right, number four. Check your account every weekday. Make sure your house is in order. I like to look at my budget and my accounts every single morning during the week. I like to brew a cup of coffee here at home in my kitchen. And then I like to sit there and I like to go into my checking and I like to go to my credit card and I like to just make sure sometimes I go into my investment accounts, um, like my Roth IRA. That's a little depressing right now. So if it's, if it's too much, don't look right now because it's probably not great, but I have faith that things will improve later. Right? So I look at it every day. It takes me five minutes, just five minutes. That way there's no fraudulent charges on your credit card. Uh, an auto payment of your debit card might've come out that you forgot was like an annual thing that you did or something like that. I like to just know, or I'm like, oh, I forgot. I actually did go to the, I popped into whatever, this store to get this. Like, I want to make sure I track everything. So if you look at it every day for five minutes, nothing's going to slide past you because you're in the habit of looking at it. You check every morning too? Awesome. Number five, track every dollar. You guys track every dollar. And that's during that five minutes in the morning, you could do that. You could enter your receipt. So there's a couple different ways you can do this. Sometimes I will put my receipts together. Um, everything that I spend is digital. So I can always look into my checking or into my credit card to see what I spent. I am a digital girl in a digital world when it comes to this. I don't do the cash envelope system. I am too paranoid. I'm too panicked that I'm going to drop money somewhere, that it's going to fall out of my purse, that I'm going to be uh, losing the cash. So there's some people it works so well for, they've got a system, they're organized and that's not a fear of theirs. But I, for me, if it's, if it's not in writing, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. <laughs> I need it digitally recorded. That's just me. You do you boo, but you know me, that's how I do it. Right. So what you could do is, you know, so either go back in the morning for those five minutes, go back into your, your spending thing. Or if you do receipts, Enter them in that way. And while you're at it, this is not one of the rules, but use your cash back apps while you're doing it, guys. Use your fetch. Yep, use your fetch. Use your receipt hog, which I also just talked two videos ago. And use your Rakuten before you shop. Yeah. Anyway, those are my three. So always, that's what I always do. That's like icing on the cake. Get a little bit extra money. All right. So track every dollar. I use every dollar and 
it's, I use the free version. It's a Dave Ramsey tool. And for me, that has worked really well. I love it. But if you're just doing straight up paper and pen, just track it. That's all. Just track it. Every dollar you spend, write it down. Oh, Maria, you're doing every dollar too? Nice. Yeah, it gets easier and easier. Number six. This one truly changed everything for me back when I became a single mother and I was scared. How am I going to, how am I going to make this work? Uh, number six is make a unique budget for each month that is relevant to that month. Before I learned of this, again, this was learned through listening to the total money makeover by Dave Ramsey. I would do more of like a general budget, not tending to the needs of each month. And it wasn't right. It was never right. When I started doing a unique monthly budget, which guys, I'm in the middle of teaching a six part series right now. I've already done three this month. Actually, the next one is March 29th right here on the channel at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard. Write that down, March 29th. I do a budget class preparing us for each month. So please check that out if you are looking to get your April budget on point. I do this every single month so that I am prepared for the month ahead. Sue B, thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate that so much, guys. Thank you for when you do that. Just helps the channel so much, and I appreciate the support. Thank you, Sue. When you make the unique monthly budget, it's different every month, especially for me. It, it could be the same for you, but there are things that come up in April that don't come up in September, and there are things in September that don't come up in April back to school, birthdays, April, you've got Easter. Oh, do you guys want me to do for this coming week a living below your means this spring video? Um, last year I did one. It's actually on my main page right now, living below your means this spring. This week we're actually starting spring, I think. Isn't that um, this week, right? It turns into spring technically. Do you guys want a video on that? Or do you want something else? Let me know. Do you want a living below your means this spring? Or do you want something else? And if you do want something else, let me know what it is. But um, that's what I'm thinking about talking about this coming week. Because I love thinking about things quarterly also. And so I love thinking about things in, especially in three month increments. For some reason that speaks to me. So we've just we're just finishing up quarter one. And I love a fresh quarter. I love a fresh month. Do you guys feel that way too? Okay. Great. And if you're brand new here, you guys, I make a new video every single Friday. It means so much to me when you guys, oh yes. Okay. Lots of you are saying yes. Um, when you guys take the time to watch my video each week, it really helps the channel when we have, you know, my next goal is for us to become 50,000 deep and we're at 43,000 or something around there. Um, and my main reason is I want to get this message out to as many people as possible to be as helpful as possible because I do feel like some people are flailing right now and they're scared and they're feeling panicked about money. And I hope this channel, I mean, hopefully the the 200 of you that are in here right now, you you find some comfort and some ideas to improve your situation each week. So I want to get to as many people as possible. Um, that's also thank you for sharing me with other people um, because I want to make a difference in this world. I really do. And I hope that the value you get, <laughs> the yes, flailing, right? Like it's it can be a scary time. All right, join me for the budgeting class on 
Wednesday the 29th if you want to prepare for April together, but I'll, I'm going to work on a video for living below your means this spring for this Friday. So I hope you all check it out. Oh, Adele, you're watching it on Facebook. Is it fine? Is it coming in fine? Great. This was my first time sharing it on Facebook also. More videos, Kate. Friday is too long to wait. You know, thank you for that feedback. I've often, there were times on this channel. <laughs> so you guys know, right? I'm a single mom. I have a full-time job. I do videos every Friday. I do lives when I can. Um, I try to do community posts when I can. So I always want to bring you what you want. Would you guys prefer two videos a week, like around Tuesday-ish or something? Or is there another day that you guys would love? So if I have a Friday video, what's the other day that you guys would be like, I need another one. I need another, I need another hit of frugal living. Like what, what would be Tuesday and Friday? Cause that's spread out nicely. More is better. Okay. And that's the other thing. I never want to saturate you guys so much where you're like, okay, enough, enough, enough. You're, you're good on Friday. <laughs> Mondays, Tuesday, Friday, Tuesday. All right. I'm going to think about that for you guys. I, and, and this is my other question while I have you, while I have you in my, I, I appreciate this. Do you want it to be similar to Friday? Or is there some other angle that would be most supportive to you in this journey? That might be a hard question to answer right on the spot. But if I did a second video, do you want it just like Frugal Friday or something slightly different from a different angle? Is there something else? Oh, is Prepper Princess in here? Oh, Prepper Princess, I, your channel, I mean, I've always watched your channel, but I have been binging your channel like crazy lately. I just, I just adore you. And I, I'm so glad you're here and you're stopping in right now. If you ever want to connect like via email or something, I would love to talk to you sometime. I just think you're awesome. I just, if you ever want to talk, please let me know. Uh, my email Kate Caden channel at Gmail, but I would love to chat with you sometime if you're ever interested. Oh, did somebody say Hope and Larry are in here too? Oh, sorry guys. Hope and Larry, are you in here? Oh, hey, I see you, Hope. How are you? You guys, under the median also, we just did a collab together not too long ago. We did another one before about inflation. I just... Oh, she sees it too. I'll email you my number. Perfect. Thank you. I love, thank you, Prepper Princess. I'd love to talk to you. Yay. And Hope and Larry. Oh my gosh. Hope and I text message and I just, I have like the best conversations with her. Thank you. Oh yeah. So if you guys aren't watching Under the Median or Prepper Princess, I mean, hello. Don't miss another day. A frugal get together. I love it. Okay. So we were on to, we were just talking about making your, your budget, right? Now let's move on to number seven. And this is another way that I think some people, oh, sorry, Marcy, you were talking about pajama drama every two weeks. Okay. You still like, the, I love that too. Oh, wait, were you guys telling me that you wanted to, all right, pajama drama, declutter. Oh, you guys like, you want it all. I love it. Yes, Holly. Yes. Okay. Let me finish up what we're talking about. And then I will, I will, do I have time for silly questions? Always. But let me get to, let me keep going. But I love silly questions. All right. Number seven, execute and adjust the budget as you go. If you've been watching me or if you're new here, I'm not a big fan of set it and forget it. Accept your auto payments so that you don't miss it. But as far as like your budget goes, I don't just set it and then I'm done. I'm like, 
I'm like in every dollar. I'm like, I got my dirty hands in it every single day. I'm always talking. I'm always like taking my numbers. And like, for example, I always set aside $50 for gas, but I almost never use $50 for gas in the summer probably, but in the winter, I don't really go so far. So I like, say I set aside $50, maybe I spend 40 or 35, there's money left there. So I put it in my savings or wherever it needs to go. But my default is I always put it in savings. If I have a remainder, if it was $50 and I only spend 35, that 15, just move it up to savings. But if you set your budget for 50 and then you spend 35 and you don't move it, what happened there? Like it's not accounted for. So I like to adjust as I go. Don't set it and forget it. And say, for example, you do decide to go out. Your friend pops into town and you haven't seen her in a year and you decide to go to dinner. And that was not in your budget, but you know you have wiggle room elsewhere. Say you had put in your lifestyle budget hundred dollars for miscellaneous and your dinner is 25. Take some out of the miscellaneous, put it in there, plan for it. Like don't just leave it because where did it go? You know what I mean? Don't be afraid to move stuff. I think people think, well, I said it's this. Well, yes, but life happens, you know? So it's okay. Oh, Denise, thank you for becoming a member. Oh my gosh, I love your cup of coffee picture. Hi, Denise. Number eight, always have a savings goal. Always have a savings journey in your mind of what you're trying to do. So you guys know right now, mine is to pay off the house. That's the only debt I have. And outside of my regular budgeting, your but <laughs> your binging old videos. I love binging creator older videos that I love. I love doing that. But like right now, the house is the thing. Back in the day, remember when my car was the thing? Actually, when when you guys when we met, I had just paid off the car. Like that's kind of one of my catalysts for even like sharing things. I was like, oh. If I was able to save up $20,000 to pay off my car and I was able to build up a $10,000 emergency fund, like I'm like, I can tell other people what I'm doing. I can do this. Like I figured this out to the degree, you know, some people might not think that's, you know, a big feat, but for me, it was huge at the time being able to save up 20,000 for the car and then a $10,000 backup. I was like, okay, I feel like I'm capable of sharing you know, oh my gosh. First of all, I love this woman right here. Hi, Karen. Do you end up saying no to a lot to stay on the course? That is a great question. The answer is yes and no. And this is why. Yes, because I don't do everything people ask me to do. But no, because I narrow it down to the things I really want to do. So, and I'm not, this is oh, that was about to sound icky. Basically, if I am spending my time with you, you know I really want to be there. I am a single mom with a full-time job, YouTube channel. I'm a choreographer. I don't have a lot of time to just shoot the breeze and not be like taking every moment for all it is. So if we're spending time together, we're going out to dinner, I'm texting you, we're set, like, I really want to be with you. Right now, here on the channel, I really want to be with the K-Squad. I want to be talking with you or else I would be spending my time doing something else. You know what I mean? Um, so I don't feel like I miss out, Karen, on the things that probably are not that, uh, like, I, I don't feel like I'm missing out because I'm being selective and intentional is more the word. I'm intentional with my time. Does that make sense? 
Number nine, hook up your future self with a retirement plan every month if you can. Or if you are like doing like a Roth IRA, try to max it out for the year if you can. If you're doing a 401k, do at least to the match, if not more, if you can do more. But don't forget about retirement. What happened to Matthew? Oh, sorry, Matthew. I mi I missed the, the beginning of it, but I just saw you're talking about somebody that she only has $50 every check left and she makes 400 more than take home monthly than me. What was the beginning of it? Oh, hold on. Let me go back. Oh, Sadly, my wife and I have separate finances. I've been trying to get her on board for seven years. It's so, it. you guys know I am single now. I wasn't as into the finances and in the way that I think about it when I was married. Like this has become, I was, but it wasn't in the forefront. I digress. It's very hard doing it with a, with a partner. It is. But there are ways and there's sometimes like you have to just do what you can on your end and set a good example. But I digress because that's another that's another whole video. All right. Hook up your future self with retirement. Don't forget about it. If you are in your teens and you're watching this, oh, I'm so jealous. Compound interest is so beautiful. It's so magical. And if you have earned income as soon as you can, do a Roth IRA, get involved in retirement, don't put it aside. I kind of just put a blind eye to it in my 20s. I thought, oh, that's for older people. That's for older people. I don't need to worry about that. I was very wrong. Very, 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 very wrong. Oh, I tell Caden all the time. I'm like, honey, I'm going to teach you a lot of stuff in this life. But if you can listen to what I tell you, about money, I really think you're gonna be in good shape. Yeah. Sorry, I was reading something, okay. And number 10. I feel like I say this in every video. <laughs> but number 10, my number 10 money rule is to give. It's to give. Prepper Princess, if you're still in here, <laughs> I love this so much. I was watching one of her videos a while back and she was she was sharing how uh, she had opened up her trunk and there was cat food, lots of cat food she'd gotten. Um, my email is Kate Kaden. Oh, let me write it in here. Let me write it in so you can copy and paste. Hold on. That's my email, guys. My work email if you need it. <laughs> but Prepper Princess had her trunk open full of cat food and she doesn't have a cat. <laughs> I don't like, she was getting it for the shelter. She was getting it for other people that have cats because she knows that other people have cats and they can't afford to pay for their cat food. So she was, I was like, I love that. She's very giving. And yeah, when you're buying cat food for, and you don't have a cat, I just love that so much. You guys know I have three cats and speaking for the cats, we thank you. <laughs> but giving every month, even if it's little, even if it's teeny, even if it's you go to the store to get something and they're like, would you like to donate an extra dollar for whatever? Back in the day, I'm like, no. And now I'm like, yes. Anytime they ask me. Yes. A do oh, you want a dollar? Yes. Even starting that small, the extra dollar, because you're probably going to be okay. You're probably going to be okay. Even though that, you know, sometimes I told you I used to hold on to money so tightly and I was so nervous that I was not going to have enough. And as soon as I got out of that 
mentality and I started giving and not being panicked about it, I had more. Miraculously just had more, you know? Oh, I just got your email, Prepper Princess. <laughs> I I want to hear your cat food story if there's more to that cuz I I loved when I when I watched that video I'm like, "Yep." Sandra, I think that is definitely giving. She says, "Member to your channel is giving." It's in order to watch all my archives and it's kind of like almost like a tip to my channel like, "Kate, Thanks for making this content. It's $1.99, the price of a candy bar. I think that is giving. You're giving where you want to support your money. And I'm not being like, give me your money. And, you know, I think I get, um, it's like 70% of that. So anyway, I, but I appreciate it so much. But yeah, that's giving. It's like one little way that you're supporting where you want your money to go. Like who you, you know. Hold on, I'm just looking at what our, okay. All right. Let's take a second. If there are any questions you have that are not like, if I answer them, it'll take us a million hours to answer it. But like more on the, on the shorter, slightly shorter answer side. Sherry asks, do you set up separate accounts for the four areas you always talk about so they're not all lumped into one account? Thank you. No, I don't. I keep that. So my checking account would be kind of responsible for those four categories. And my four categories are, okay, so savings, lifestyle, giving, and um, household. Households like the bread and butter. And that's like You've got to know your household budget, right? It's it's in the same account. I don't separate them. I separate them in every dollar, but I don't actually have separate accounts for them. They're all in the same place. Woo, woo, you're going to be finishing up baby step number two in two weeks. You're paying off all your debts. Holy, Matthew, that's amazing. Yeah, we want to hear the cat food story. I, if I would have thought, like, obviously I didn't know you'd be here, but I, like, I, I wish I could like pull you in right now. I could share it, but I do have to go get my son at rehearsal in a little bit. So that's probably not going to work today, but just know I'm thinking about it. That would be so fun. We should do... Someday, if you ever want to, under the median and Prepper Princess, we should do like this and I can invite us all in and we could all chat together. <laughs> that would be fun if you ever felt like it, like just a, a frugal hangout. We could come up with a topic that would bring some value to the K-Squad. Melissa, thanks for asking. I had a, a crushing headache last week and um, I went to the doctor and I have to get an MRI, which I had one maybe six years ago and luckily everything was good, but um, I'm not sure what was going on. I'm like, could it just be I'm on my screen too much? He's like, maybe. I'm like, could it just be this? I was giving him all these like babies, like, but we're going to do an MRI first. I'm like, oh. Yes. I would love to host that sometime. So let's put that in our, in our, in our mind. Cause that would be really fun. Jackie seconds that. Are you using a. Okay. How do I explain this? I don't have individual sinking funds. It's too much for my brain, though I see the value in it. So I have one big general sinking fund, and it's going to come out of that. 
That's a very good question. Am I going to take it from saved money for the house or am I going to take it out of my emergency fund? For me, even though the deck, I could see how I could swing this into emergency fund because it's not safe. I'm not even sure I would have a deck if I had to dip into my emergency fund. Don't quote me on that because I'm not sure because I do want a deck. But the answer is I'm going to take it out of my general, general sinking fund for whatever I need. I'm not going to touch my emergency fund. Uh, Matthew. Um, I have a 403B through work. Should I get something else for a time? Yeah. So the 403B is great. If you are able, I really like the Roth IRA. I do it through Fidelity. You don't have to do it through Fidelity, but, um, if you're looking for a little bit more and it, it depends how much you're putting into that, are you doing like as are you like fully funding that? Um, I personally couldn't fully fund my 403B or my Roth, uh, excuse me, my 403B or my 401k when I had them. Now I have main state retirement, but the Roth IRA, the max from for my age right now is 6,500. So I try to max that out every year. So if you can add that onto it, I would. Hi, Stu. Thank you for all you do for everyone. We really appreciate you. Thank you. I appreciate you too. That would be so fun. I would love to see your shortcuts to save money. Like we know you make your own coffee, but do you do anything else like wash Ziploc bags to reuse or wash your shower curtain instead of replacing? Oh, okay. So here's a, like where I have used this term, but I haven't used it in a while where I am like contemporary frugal, meaning I am a woman of the times now. Um, I remember back in the day, I had this friend who they had a lot of money. And she told me her grandmother made her wash the Ziploc bags to reuse them. Back in the day, like my family didn't really have frugal habits at all. And I was like, why would you do that? And also, you guys have plenty of money. But that's why she had they had plenty of money. They had frugal things that they would do. So I'm not frowning up upon plastic doing that. Personally, do I do it? No. If I had, there's some ways that I'm going to spend my time. And there's some ways I just am not. The shower curtain is another one where I have thought about, I really should just clean this. But honestly, I don't. And some people might be like, oh, you don't? I don't, but I do have some other things like, um, like, like I use my shout, my bath towel more than once. Some people, they dry off, they throw it in the wash. I don't do that. I reuse it. Um, so little ways like that, that I can afford to do, but the time of cleaning things out and the, the cleaning stuff. Oh my gosh. I I'm, I'm a big believer in finding ways to save money, but there's something like baking bread. I don't bake bread. Would that save me some money? Would it be probably better bread? Yeah, I'm not doing it. You know what I mean? So yeah, and I'll, I'll, I will, if I think of more off the top of my head, yeah. Hello, thanks Judy, hi Judy. Looking to, forward to your videos and collaboration, but I have to go now. Um, Piglet, Piglet's bank, she just had a, a really, a really hard loss in her family. Um, if you are still here, I, I, you and I have emailed, but I just want to say again, I'm, I'm so sorry for your loss in person. I just want to say it again.
I will. Thank you. Yeah, I do. Do I recommend a Roth IRA at 60? I do. 100% I do. Yeah, because um, where's the cutoff? I can't remember right now. You might even have it a little higher. I can't remember if it's after 50. Does anybody know offhand? I, I'm not going to Google it and go out at the moment, but um, yeah, I would. I totally would. If you can, like say it, say, I feel like, I feel like you, I feel like the, there's an age uh, cutoff where it's actually a little bit more like back when I could do 6,000, if you were, I think over 50, you could do 6,500. Now my age is at 6,500. So it might even be like 7,000. I'm not sure, but let's say it's even 6,500. Yes. If you can do it, I would Olympia. Oh, good. Never heard the shower curtain thing. I've never, so you, you just watch. So I do, and maybe I don't even need this. I have a shower curtain and then I have a shower curtain liner. Do you guys not do the liner? Is that something that my family did? And I just, do you guys do shower curtain liners? Am I wasting? I don't have to change it that often. It doesn't get that gross that often, but I do a shower curtain liner. Do other people do liners? I wash my shower. Okay. Okay. And I meant my, my liner, my regular shower curtain I'll wash, but what about the liner? Totally. Hi, Elizabeth. Yeah. Oh, I didn't mean the, cur oh, sorry guys. I didn't mean the curtain. I thought she meant the liner. Hey. It's their world. We're just a part of it, right? <laughs> oh, thank you, Anne Marie. You can contribute seventy five hundred at fifty. So yes. After oh, okay, yes. You just wash your liner. You do have a liner. You do have a liner. Do you just wash it or do you get a new one? I get a new one every, not often. It's not often. But I probably could do a better job of cleaning it. And when you say wash the liner, <laughs> do you guys just like wipe it off or do you, what do you do? Oh, wait. Oh, okay. So the liners that I buy are like three bucks, maybe four. Um, I don't know. I have a liner, but rarely shower. I'm a bath person. So I guess it's never gotten so dirty. It needs to be replaced. I have a cloth curtain that I wash on occasion. Oh, so you're a bath kind of gal. Caden was a super bath kind of guy and he just got into showers. Yes. Right. Contemporary frugal. Like I, there's some things I'm not going to do. And there's some things that work great for other people, but because of just, it also comes down to what I'm good at and what I suck at. And it also comes down to, just my time and what's worth the exchange. There are some times where I'm an overthinker and I waste too much time on the little things and I wish I didn't waste so much time. Like, just move on, Kate. Like, why am I obsessing about this to save, you know, a dollar or two? Like, get on with it. That's how, sometimes I, I've done that, you know? Like the analysis paralysis of like, if I do it this way, I'll save it. And I spend so much time obsessing about it, like make the decision and move on. Me, I'm talking to myself. <laughs> yeah, six months is great.
you know, let me ask you guys what you think about this. Okay. When talking about emergency funds, okay. Oh, and Prepper Princess and Frugal Stew and Under the Median. Uh, and if Jan is still in here, like, and anyone, all, all of you, what are your thoughts about Matthew, you don't sound like a deadbeat. What are you talking about? So, okay, for an emergency fund, three to six months expenses is kind of like what's recommended. And then I've heard, I remember like when I used to watch Jordan Page all the time, like she, I think they had saved up to 12. And I was like, oh, that is so amazing. But now this is my question and not, not regarding like Jordan's way of doing things, but like, do you think, because th this is kind of where I was thinking, because I got to a point where I was at 12, then I'm, all that money sitting there. Now, I know that uh, some people don't pay off their houses because they rather invest it. That's not how I feel about things. I want to pay off my house, even though I know it could probably be better invested. That's a goal of mine. Oh, Prepper Princess and Under the Median, you guys don't have mortgages. You guys both have paid it off. Um, but for emergency fund, do you think we should stick with, I'm just curious of your thoughts of it, stick with the three to six and anything over six invest or put up toward your mortgage or whatever, or do you think you should try to go the full enchilada of 12? Or do you think that is not putting your money to best use? Let me know in the comments. I can be an overthinker. Yeah. Good job. It's it's a process, right? I'm such an overthinker. I love Jordan too. I've watched her since like her beginning videos. <laughs> yes. That's how I feel too. Like what did you just do in the shower? <laughs> I thought that was the point, right? <laughs> hey, Sean, how are you? Goal is six months. Yeah. Depends on your sense of security and the time you think it'll take to get that income. Yeah. Thank you for everybody's input. Whoops. Whoops. You pay half of the, all the bills plus. Do you and your, you don't have to answer this, but do you and your wife split the bills for your son? Or is it like, is everything 50-50 even when it comes to your son? Hello, Enrod. I think it's important to have money that is liquid and accessible. Yeah. How much though? Like how much do you think? I had four months emergency fund, but now that I have just, I have four months emergency fund, but now I just have one and have put more into savings to better interest. Oh, that's a good idea. We do full six months and then invest, but some of the extra money is set aside for specific goals too. Yeah. That's kind of where I'm at right now. Cause uh, like I, I was like, do I want to just put more, you know, you guys know, I always want to put more toward the house. Depends on your life stage. If you're retired, a year could be good. Otherwise, if you are still building wealth, better to invest. Okay. I absolutely say the more, the better as I pre I expectedly got, oh, oh, you're in remission now. Laura, I'm so glad you are okay. How old am I? I am the ripe age of 44 years old. I never say that confidently. Like after 40, I'm like, what was I again? 44. <laughs> oh yeah, yes. Oh, it's okay. I know some people don't want to say it, but I'm I'm fine with it. Good question. Whatever makes you most comfortable. I don't follow the crowd three to six or 12. And most people don't even have. A, so you. Wait, did you say what you do? Proper, proper, OK, because you do, so you don't follow any of that. 
Do you mind sharing what you do do? Do you even have, do you even have an emergency? You do. I'm trying to think, wait, hold on. I'm trying to think of what, I'm not, not confusing what you said. But you're right. Most people don't even have enough to cover a $400 emergency. So if you guys are, have got something like we're, we're doing well. Three to six months in saving for big things like new to us cars or big so that nice. Hi. Hi in South Africa. How are you? I'm so glad to see you. Hey Val. On your way to the spa, take me with you. Oh, Rosie's behaving. Hello. Uh, <laughs> Mom. How does a single mom of four never having a career make it starting out with three years of college, no degree and have been home for 18 years. Okay. Karen, first of all, you're going to think this sounds weird, but welcome to the single motherhood. It's not as bad as you might've thought that is hard though. You've never had a career, but you don't like, if it's like a career of like, I think when people think of a career, we're thinking of like, oh, I'm a, I'm a lawyer. I'm a this, I'm a that. You can still have jobs. W what state are you in, Karen? Because I just feel, I don't know about where you guys are, but there are tons of jobs. People are trying to fill positions in the school systems. We are desperate. It's very rough in, in many different areas. So if you are looking to, and, and how old are your kiddos? Sorry, th this could be like a, a couple part series. Are they older? Are they younger? Um, Karen, if you can start getting an income, you can just get a, a regular job anywhere. Start getting that income going. Um, when you first get divorced, it's very scary, Right. And it's very like, well, how am I going to do this? I hope that you're able to, Karen, have you been with me for a bit? I'm looking at your face to see if I've, if I've seen your, your face in it, um, often. Um, you're going to just, you're just going to start from the beginning. You're going to get an income and you're going to just start, you're going to budget. You're going to watch my budget classes or watch my budget video. And we're going to, we're going to get you through this. Single mom of four. Listen, it's a lot. Women are amazing though. And I'm not saying men are not amazing, but I'm, I'm thinking you are the mom right now with the four children. Four children who love you more than anything in this world. And you will do anything for them. I know this without even asking. So you're going to do it. And it's going to be, you're going to have an inner strength that you had no idea you had but you can do this day by day, hour by hour and just get, get some income, get a, get, get a job going and, and you're going to budget and you're going to do it. And in the meantime, you're going to be loving on those kids. They're not even going to know like the struggle that you're having within it's, it's, it's hard, but you're going to do it and you're going to be amazing. Thank you, BG. Oh, well, thank you very much. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Right? I can see your perspective because you're paying off the six months. Yeah. Yeah. Sandra, you know I'm on this journey. I want to do it. Ooh, happy early birthday. You're going to be 60. Okay, she does pay half. Wow, you really kept that separate. Some people that works better for them, you know? I don't, you know, my my ex-husband and I, we had separate checking. We had separate checkings. And then we had, for a long time, actually, now that I think about it, I don't think about it much, but we had separate checkings for a long time. And then eventually we 
um, got a joint account to pay for like household stuff. So actually we were, we were relatively, we just kind of had a system of our own, but we had our own, we had our own accounts. So sorry, Sue, I don't know what a GIC is. Does anybody know what that is? Sorry. Yeah, sunshine, chick. The other weird thing about me, <laughs> as far as the debt payment goes, is when I started this journey, I only had my... Did I only have my car payment? I feel like I only had my car payment. So that one was like what I went after, but, um, there's the snowball method where you take the smallest debt first, you list them out smallest to biggest, you pay the small one off while paying the minimum on everything. And then you take, like, say it was a hundred dollars, you pay it off. And then you take that payment and you roll it into the next one. And then you pay off the next smallest and the next smallest till you, so that's the snowball going down the hill. The other way to do it is by interest rate, which is the avalanche. You take the highest interest rate and then you do it that way. But um, guys, what do you think? Do you guys think the snowball is better? A lot of people, Dave Ramsey would say uh, the snowball method is better because it's psychologically more encouraging. Uh, that book that I'm reading, The Simple Path to Wealth, he completely disagrees. He thinks the avalanche is better. I never had to snowball or avalanche proper, if you will. So my gut says I'd want to snowball. But if you're a numbers person and those numbers like would bother the heck out of you that you're paying off a lower interest, but anything over 5% interest, like get in there. I invest in my 401k, max up my Roth IRA. My savings account gets so big over a couple of years, I just buy another house and I'll repeat it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh. Oh, wow. Val, thank you so much for the super sticker. I appreciate it. That makes me feel super. Thank you. Thank you. Hold on. Did you just do that twice? Did you just do that twice? Or is that just showing me twice? Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, Val. Val's been with me for a very long time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh... Thank you. <laughs> oh, you guys, I want to talk to you forever, but I just saw the time and I have to go pick up my son. He has a rehearsal right now, so I've got to go grab him. And then he's having a having a friend over for a little bit. We're having a little play date today. Oh, all right. Um, Prepper Princess, I'm going to text you in a little bit. Um, guys, thank you so much for being here. This was, I really enjoyed spending time with you today on this Sunday. If you didn't watch my video from Friday, please watch that next. And um, just thank you for your support. I hope that you enjoyed this. I used to do this every Sunday and then I got away from it for a bit because of my schedule. But I can, tr if this is helpful for you, I know some people hate lives, some people love lives. Let, let me know. Like, what's the most, uh... oh, so I can throw the whole liner in the wash? Okay. <laughs> oh, good. Vegans in the wild over 50. I'm so glad you feel better. Some people are saying snowball. Which cat? My cats aren't out right now, are they? Thank you for day homestead. Yes, on the lies. All right, I'll try to do more when I can, you guys. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you guys. I'll see you every Friday. I will work on trying to getting that second video to you each week. I will, I'm gonna start thinking about a strategy. What is that? Did you just 
hear that? I think that was the wind outside. Okay. All right. I love you guys. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for being here. Bye.